during the fifth dynasty of Egypt, there was a man who worked as a high-ranking priest under King Neferkari Kaki. He was Wahdi, and the tomb that the Egyptian archaeologist discovered a few months ago belongs to him. According to the hieroglyphs found inside, he had a family that consists of his mother, his wife, his three sons, and a daughter. Rife with colorful portrayals of their lives, the tomb consists of five shafts and more than 50 statues. It was built somewhere in 2415-2405 BC in the Saqqara necropolis that lies to the south of Cairo. In the documentary, it's also revealed that there is an inscription that reads, Wahdi, purified priest to the king, overseer of the divine state, overseer of the sacred boot, revered with the great god Wahdi. Although he was not a part of the project, Aidan Dodson, an Egyptologist at the University of Bristol, spoke about the site to Nadjiu. He said, what we have is a rock out tomb chapel. He also said that the rest of the decoration is made up of scenes intended to magically recreate the environment in the next world. In particular, the production of food to sustain the dead for eternity and their recipient of offerings. Notably, Wahdi was also described as an egotist by Nabil, one half of the deo that was translating the hieroglyphs. Another fascinating aspect of the find was that the poems found from the tomb presumably belongs to the priest aforementioned family members. Furthermore, the opulent wall deposit elegant and revealing portrayals of his life, and the multiple artifacts retrieved from the site also attest to his status. However, the reality could have been quite different and we discuss the possibility of this in the following section. Despite his impressive position, the archaeological evidence paints a very different story about Wahdi. First off, Nermil and Nabil noted that Wahdi's name has been overwritten over someone else on the wall. Secondly, given the massive craving of a man and woman one would think his wife would feature heavily in the hieroglyphs. However, to their surprise, it is the mother's name that makes frequent appearance after deliberating over this information. They came up with some rather fascinating theories as to what could have transpired. It could be possible that Wahdi stole the tomb from his brother, although the sibling's name appear nowhere on the wall. There is a poem that has been dedicated to his spirit, which the experts think could be a form of absolution for Wahdi. The archaeologist also found some mummies that had been burned. Then the concept of the field of reeds is discussed. It is supposed to be this beautiful paradise where the dead could continue to live eternally if they prove themselves as virtuous to Osiris, the god of death and resurrection. So Nermin and Nabil hypothesized that Wahdi felt confident about reaching the ultimate afterlife destination with this personal form of penance. According to Amira Shaheen, a professor of rheumatology 
at Cairo University, Wahdi suffered a lot after the death of his children. She noted that his bones were aligned irregularly and described the supposedly 35 years old as a delicate man. Furthermore, it seemed as though he was suffering from form of anemia, much like his mother. However, the academic soon felt that it could have been malaria that wiped out his entire family. After all, the bones of the offspring revealed that they were quite young. In fact, the youngest seemed to be just six when he died. It was a bit appealing from the team of archaeologists when they discovered that a man of Wahdi's stature had been buried in a simple wooden coffin. Also, there is a fact that the first ever mummified lion cub was also found on premises, and you would understand why they were surprised. After all, 55 statues were found at the site. This practice was usually reserved for those of royal blood. So, if Amira is actually able to prove her theory, then Wahdi and his apparent family will become the first ever documented case of malaria in the world. James Tovell, the director, also made some stark observation of the entire case. We think of it's an entirely modern phenomenon that everyone wants to filter their image online to make themselves look something more than they are. But that is exactly what was happening way back then. The real Wahdi was a man with a club foot who suffered from poor health, to well said. He continued, but through his avatar in the tomb, he created this huge, powerful, perfect image of a man to last for all eternity. That's fantastically modern. When people find our Instagram posts in 4,400 years time, will they be saying in 2020, was there this entire tribe of people who were all perfectly thin and only took great photos? To see more videos about ancient Egypt, please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.